Hello, hi, and welcome back to another YouTube video. Today we're going to be looking at a build order tutorial for one of my most frequently used Terran versus Terran build orders at the moment, and that's going to be a 3 Raven 3 CC opener. Um, pretty standard, and it's been a pretty standard build order for a while, but ever since the Raven got a pretty big change, everybody's been kind of experimenting with the unit and seeing what's best. You know, like nobody knows if, if two Raven is the best, three Raven is the best, or no Raven is the best. I'm sort of personally leaning towards three Raven still being kind of the strongest. So I thought I would throw up a build order tutorial um, for this build order first before any other builds. And uh, honestly, this is just a very standard and very safe build that I think most people would benefit from learning. So to get started here, we do go barracks first, and then we go refinery, refinery as we get the money for it, as always. And then um, we are gonna SCV scout this game at 18 supply, which we rally this worker to do. And the reason we do that is because we wanna check if the opponent has a barracks in his base, or if there is a barracks on our side of the map. So that's what our SCV is gonna go do now. And then of course, when the gas geysers finish up here, we saturate them to three out of three each. And then our SV is going to go across the map there. And then once we're finished building our barracks, we're going to throw down another supply depot. But the placement of the supply depot is actually quite important here. Some people like to wall off the ramp just so if your opponent scouts, they can't come in your base. Personally, I never even see the benefit of going all the way in when you scout. I kind of just only like to go up the ramp and then down the ramp anyways. So I go for the depot at the edge of the base as my second depot. And I don't put it too close to the edge here. Like, this is just for spotting drops. It's for spotting the Reaper that pops up over here. Like, you just want to have this earlier, I think, because it's less of a risk since this SCV is so vulnerable while it's scouting. And if we look over here, our opponent actually does wall it off and prevents the scout. But it's not really a problem to me. Like, I'm just going to go right home. Now that I know my opponent isn't proxying me, I'm, I'm super happy. Um, I also see that they're going Reactor first, and in the case of Reactor first, you should always send your first Reaper across the map, just straight ahead, because the reason is, by the time you get there, they're not actually going to have any units done yet, because he's building his two Reapers right now, so you can pop in, you can scout, you can maybe kill a worker, and I find that to be pretty valuable. Um, so back at home, we did build our factory when we got the money for it. And then after we built our factory, I'll just rewind here just to show you guys. I don't want you guys to miss anything. So after the factory gets built, we do take two guys off of gas. And we're not going to put those guys back on gas until after our command center is built. Or at least started building. So I'll point that out again when that happens. Um, we'll fast forward here, fast forward. So... Command center is done, and then we're going to slowly start to put two more guys on gas. As well as we're going to build two more Reapers, and we're going to build Hellions out of the factory. And also keeping up depot production. Very important. Uh, this depot comes down after you build these units. And then, yeah, here's the saturated gas geysers. In this game, since uh, this is kind of a map-dependent build order, so I'll explain this a little bit. If you're ever playing on a map that doesn't have a ramp leading up to the natural, if you go like five Reaper, it's actually quite good instead of three Reaper because your units are just going to get more damage done if you don't have to run up a ramp to start the fight. So I've actually found that opening up five Reaper uh, is a little safer and it deals more damage consistently. So... You know, it's up to you guys whether you want whether you want to build the extra two Reapers or not. Um, you can even go crazy and you can build uh, seven Reapers. I don't think it's that big of a deal. Like they're just at this point, it's 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 a matter of trying to get map control. And the more Reapers you have, the more map control you're going to get too. So it's it's an interesting debate how many of these units you want to build. I think this game we do go just five Reaper. We'll see in a moment here. Um, and then, of course, uh, we get the orbital and the natural, and that finishes. And then we're going to get a tech lab and then another tech lab. I would never build more than four Hellions. I, I think that's the limit for the Hellions, no matter what. And the reason for this is you don't want to have a Cyclone that's any later than having four Hellions build first. 
because if you have a cycle that's later, you could die to Banshees, you can die to basically any starport unit that pops out, and you need the Cyclone. So this game we actually do go for 7 Reapers, and um, the reason is, I think, is because we saw that our opponent did go re uh, Reactor first. And in the case of Reactor first, that kind of tells us that our opponent is just going to go Reaper, 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 Reaper. So going like 5-7 Reaper isn't really a bad idea. Um, it helps quite a bit here, like we're just going to be able to win this fight because we have the defender's advantage, which means we're going to have more units. And then yeah, when my sec when my 6th uh, and 7th Reaper pop out, we're just going to do a counter attack and, and try to counter him there. Uh, I didn't mention the gas timing here, but this gas geyser should come down basically like as the command center is done. You obviously want to have that saturated as quickly as you can as well. Um, and then looking at our production again, we did get supply block for a moment, which is fine. But we do build Ravens out of the starport from now on. And then we go Cyclone and then Tank out of the factory. And then we just constantly build Marines out of the barracks. While building depots, which I failed to do. And oh look, here's a Liberator, which I mentioned. And this is the exact timing you want to look out for. And if you built a 5th Hellion, you wouldn't be able to deal with this. So that's kind of why you do that. Um, so I do pressure with these units. Uh, as always, I do think you should pressure with these units. Uh, if you trade all of them and you get to trade armies, I think that's fine too. Kind of, I think this game I felt like I could do a lot. But in the end, I kind of just got a few marines. And I stayed a little too long. Like, I think I back off now. Yeah, if I had backed off one cycle earlier, I would have kept alive like three more reapers. But obviously our opponent just gets the Cyclone. It would have been much better for me to keep those alive because then I can come back in when I regen my HP. And then I could probably take these guys on. But now unfortunately our opponent is just going to, yeah, he gets the jump on me going up the ramp. And I get the scouting information of the third CC, which is good. I'm going to th throw down my third CC in a moment. Um, and yeah, we're just going to continue our build. Like we're going to go up to three Raven. And we're just going to try to do our push as normal. There's our third command center, continuing to build depots. And then once the third raven comes out, we're going to swap those off for the barracks and the swarp and the starport. And then we can just build vikings uh, right after the ravens are done, which is nice. Um, as for more buildings, we add two more barracks, and then we're also going to add another refinery and two more ebays. Um, it doesn't really matter if you build the ebays first or the barracks first, just as long as you build them both at relatively the same time. Um, so there's a little interesting micro trade that goes on here, I think. If you ever have an opponent that has one siege tank, you can actually kill it every time with just one cyclone. And the reason is quite simple. Um, the cyclone outranges the siege tank. So if you click on the siege tank and you actually look at the range marker, which you can see here, these little white dots, that's as far as the siege tank can shoot. So if you click on the siege tank and then you select your cyclone and then you kind of like quickly select between them, you can you can see that you need to click like right here to get out of range. So if you do that quickly, you can get out of range and then you can hold position. And then I have two tanks here that are kind of protecting the cyclone. And it kind of just makes this situation like checkmate for our opponent. And this kind of shows, like, why you should always wait for at least two siege tanks before you push. Because if you can't siege both at once, then you're not going to be able to kill any cyclones. And then also, um, now that he lost a tank, I just kind of dive in, drop my turrets. 99% um, of the time, if you drop your turrets first, you win the fight. And then if you add on the fact that he lost a tank for free, that's just never going to go in his favor. And our army supplies were quite even, like the whole purpose of the Reaper Hellion was kind of just to trade out and keep map control. I wasn't able to keep map control, but I was able to trade out a few units. So his army was in total not stronger than mine, maybe by like a couple supply, but not like, it wasn't like an insane army supply difference that was going to sway the outcome of a fight. It was just like a couple Reapers that I could have had. Um, so yeah, we have float our command center out when it's done. We build reactors on the barracks. There's the eBay's. I guess I have a late upgrade this game. 
I tend to always forget something. I guess this game, it's the plus one, plus one. <laughs> oh, they're there. And then, yeah, you get stim and combat shields on the barracks when you swap it. And then, yeah, you just want to constantly produce units. The timing I like to push at is usually when I get, like, four to six Vikings is when I'll do my first push. I think something weird happened this game, and our opponent does the Raven Dive Bomb, which I kind of don't really agree with this play too much. All I do is chase it down. I mean, it could be quite annoying because the opponent could just drop turret, 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 and he can focus down my Raven, which I think he gets one of my Ravens, but I get one of his Ravens. So he kind of just tries to trade Raven energy, which ultimately just doesn't do much but kill a few SCVs. And it annoys me a lot. Um, but yeah, once I clean that up, like, I would be pushing right now. So I want to be pushing right now. I'm just waiting to get rid of these first. And then, uh, yeah, we add the extra barracks. We add the extra factory. And this is kind of your three base setup here, by the way. Like, this is what you want for production at all times on three base. Because this is kind of the max you can afford. Eventually, I will throw down a fourth base. And then we can add more production after that. But uh, for now, this is kind of all we're going to be building. Uh, and then, yeah, we begin our push. Um, something I want to mention, if I want to I rewind one more time here. Because there's a very important thing that I do every game that you guys should also be doing. And it's the reason why I didn't take too much damage to the Ravens. And it's my map control. So if I actually, if I pause the game and we just look at the mini-map right now, you can see that there's no path that the Terran can attack me, where I won't see him coming. So, no ground path, except for here, but there's rocks, so it doesn't matter too much. And also my army is right here, so I can see the rocks. But uh, if he came here, there's a Marine. 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 And evidently, the Marine actually does scout the Raven. Um, but yeah, this is like a necessity. You should always have vision of every single ground path. And this actually allows me to keep all of my tanks unseaged. And that's really important because that gives me mobility to be able to move wherever I need to move without having to unsiege my tanks first. So that's a very big TVT tip. And then obviously you would build a sensor tower here as soon as you can. And then the Marines would be less needed. But at this stage of the game, it's very important to have the Marines spread out. Basically, as you take your third base, you should have the Marines spread out. Um, so yeah, we we uh, go to push now, and this is a pretty easy closeout for a game, since we did take such a good fight uh, earlier in the game. It's just nothing much the Terran can do. I ran in here, I got an excellent siege position. Our opponent didn't have those Marines, and he wasn't watching. So this is kind of what happens. You just go in, you siege, you get a good fight. Always go for the Seeker Missile on clumps of Marines. Um, how to deal with, like, what you want to use the Raven energy on probably could use its own tutorial video, which I might do one day soon. But, yeah, I'm just going to explain the current situation, and that is, and we'll rewind one second here. Like, and, and the situation here is that there's so many Marines clumped up in a ball, and if units are ever this clumped up, you should just always go for the Seeker. Like, the more units you get with the Seeker, the more valuable the Seeker is, right? So if you can ever get a good Seeker like that, it's an easy decision. And I'm already sieged up here, so I'm not worried about his siege tanks at all. I don't really need to disable them. It's not a big deal to me. And then, yeah, just easy cleanup here. Terran can't really do anything. We just siege up. We got air control. We got the, we got the Viking count. We still have the Ravens alive. Our opponent used up all his Raven energy trying to harass me. <laughs> so, yeah, we just did a counter and won. I hope you guys enjoyed the game and maybe you learned something. Hope you guys can try the build out yourself and have some success. The only thing I would vary is how many Reapers and Hellions you build. For the record, I would recommend on a map with no ramp, I would recommend you build five Reapers max. Seven Reapers only if they go reactor first. This was a very specific game. So I want to mention that again for you guys. But yeah, if you hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, if you have any questions, leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you. And stay tuned for more videos. Hit subscribe, and thanks for watching. Bye!